So, I hope you can see, you can hear me. Okay, in case, uh, just uh, if I don't hear you, please inform your colleagues and uh, and I will uh, find a way to communicate. So, uh, today I wanted to have a music program of the things we have seen uh, that we have a number of ingredients that we can consider as fuels. And as uh, so we are going to mention more about Today, I would like to focus on the most common combination of and oxidizer. And uh, I will start with uh, the first combination, which is the hydrogolic sulfur combination. This combination is made by uh, oxide of nitrogen and hydrogen. So we have to see that we have some slight possible changes because we can consider uh, mixed oxide of nitrogen and we can consider different hydrates that can be hydrogen cell. So we can combine different ways, uh, some little change in the performance of the general problem. So in this combination, what we expect is a specific which is in the range of one day B, two hundred ninety seconds of C level and two hundred thirty two hundred forty seconds. So, of course, the, the number, the, the exact number of specific parts depends on how much the on the on two main parameters, the stability plot and structural feature. And you know that the basic plot is related to the propellant combination the structural feature will depend on the level of expansion and where trust is being generated. So, uh, to, to give a value or a specific uh, mention, what is the, the, uh, what are the conditions for uh, this evaluation? And uh, here, this, the value that I'm going to show today are more or less reference. I uh, have to the case of uh, when I talk about sea level, we think of chamber pressure of about 70 bar and expansion uh, is e over t equal to 7. So expansion up to the uh, atmospheric pressure. When I talk this is for sea level. And for vacuum, I will consider again pressure of 70 bar and not a difficult point. So, the, the, a very common combination is anti-OMH. Uh, there will be 
also an optimum mesuration because you have to, to also do a lot of things once you are considering a combination of what is the relative amount that you have to consider. So, we have seen in reaction talking about uh, chemical mediation that you can have, you can consider a maximum amount of it that can be released when we uh, focus on the stereomatic condition, when we reach the stereomatic condition, but we have to evaluate uh, concerning its performance, we have also mentioned that there is a law of temperature and molar mass because we are looking to entropy. And so sometimes the building with the light propeller is the performance. So we can uh, uh, see that there is an optimal condition that depends also on what you are trying to which is the pressure. There are slight, slight changes of the best mixture ratio of oil that you have to consider. Uh, if we look to the combination of different hydrogen and nitrogen oxide, uh, we have to also we have different value of oxygen as a fluid ratio for the optimization. And in particular, if we consider a two of four of the oxidizer. And uh, uh, in combination with NQH4 or MMH or UDMH, we have as the optimum mixture ratio of maximum performance, maximum specific effort that we can get to the point where we have a theoretical maximum specific effort considering. This kind of assumptions here. We have that here, OF is 1.4. Here will be between 2.2 and 2.4. The former value is for application in, uh, for the case of here, the second one for vacuum. And for the last third one, uh, 2.6, 2.8. Of course, this will depend on. You see that we have different number of atoms here. We have different molecules, so we have also different weight of the uh, of the fuel with respect to the oxidizer. And uh, here, uh, an important. But when we are also, there is another aspect that we can consider in general. What we are, this optimum is the optimum in terms of the three parties at the uh, underlying mechanism is the main parameter that we have to improve that tell us about the performance, actual uh, performance parameter of the program. So the higher. And this is directly uh, it appears directly in the rocket equation, so we see directly this important. But you have to consider in the rocket equation the other parameters are the one related to the inner maximum. So we have on one side the specific form that the the higher it is, the lower will be the propeller mass that we need to get in even that subject. But together with it, we have to consider also the additional masses that are useful to exploit the propeller and so and this market, for instance, if you think of a liquid rocket, we have to consider the but this is going to okay. But let's let's look here. Really wrong. We have something that contains the liquid propellant and it is uh, the tank. And of course, the, the weight of the tank, the mass of the tank, is related to the volume of the propellant, not to the mass. And for this reason, the density of propellant is an important parameter. 
So when you are going to optimize, perhaps this OF will shift towards a higher content of the denser species because this will change the relative weight of text. And this will also the vision to optimize with something which is not optimal for the specific parts because with this we can minimize the, the uh, all masses, we can maximize the, the mass, for instance, or the better mass structure due to the saving of the mass. So densities are important, and I will just recall that we have a given density for the other for five, and we have different densities for inside of this and particularly uh, this decreasing as to increase the number of uh, metals group. Uh, so we have that here rho is equal to one. This is the specific gravity. So we can try to model all example weeks a meter centimeter. And this is 0.88 and here 0.61. So how we evaluate uh, the world of different that we, we have introduced a level code here that we can also use from one side, an average density of propellant and uh, quantity that measures the overall, let's say the average density of propellant. So, and we have here an average density That is the overall mass of the overall body through an oxidizer. And this is one plus OF divided one over rho F plus OF one over rho O. Right? So in the three cases I mentioned before, so let's say A is MMA. B is sorry, A is hydrogen, B and an H, and B C with the MH as the fuel. We have a, an average density that, of course, because of the change of density of the fuel, will be decreasing. and 1.05. Another method that can help us to, to, to have an evaluation of the role of these densities is uh, what uh, we make this specific impulse, which is the average flow by the specific impulse. This is not exactly a quantity that we find in our mass part. So it's let's say an indicator that we should not give too much weight. It's just to have an idea of the role of that. It's something that combines the, the value of uh, the role of density and the role of uh, specific importance. So we can uh, compare it to three cases, and we see P for three, P for seven. And uh, three, zero, one. This has the value of C11. Let's show that there is no much difference in the first two cases where well, we have to consider this mega change of density if you're using UDMH. So you recall that you're using UDMH to extend the range of liquid stage, make it the uh, fuel more stable, but uh, at the cost of bigger density. So of an increased amount of tanks. So uh, the 
In terms of specific impact, there are no much changes. We will see some plot later. And uh, among the different uh, other things we have considered. And uh, yes, we can make an example of uh, evaluation of performance. And then I will leave uh, you the problem making a practice plus other examples. Uh, so just to recall that here we are always considering uh, hypercolic combination. That means the storable hypercolic. That means that on one side you have a storable combination, so it's liquid at Earth standard condition, and uh, also the hypercolicity means that we can easily consider many recognitions because we don't need to uh, design a recognizer on purpose, and you can exploit the fact that the propellants put in contact start to react. So here, just uh, an example on about how to evaluate the stoichiometric mixture ratio for this kind of propellant combination, and uh, the maximum expected uh, Specific parts, we can balance a reaction between high and another center of side, considering uh, the main product, the stable product of the action. Here we have H and O, so we have water, and we have also nitrogen. So we can balance here and we have two plus one, two moles of hydrazine and one mole of hydrogen tetroxide that provide us with four moles of water vapor and three moles of hydrogen. So consider here now the Entropy of formation of each of these species in mega per kilogram. There is plus 1.57 for either three minus 0.191 for H2O4 minus 13.4 for H2O and zero. Or and two. We can consider also the uh, molar mass for each of these species and let's say that uh, it's not M. Let's see the mass. Let's say the mass. And we can consider that for exactly this number of moles, we have two moles of hydrazine that should be multiplied by the molar mass of hydrazine, which is 4 and 2832. Then we have here one and uh, uh, 64 plus 28 is 92, the molar mass of 24. And then we have four here by 18 and three by 28. So this is just to have the relative amount of masses of each uh, species, a small percentage that is present in this reaction, and so that we can evaluate our mass fraction here that among the reactants. Uh, we have uh, 64 over the sum of 64 and 92, so it's 64 over under 56. And we have uh, that here the top is uh, 0.41 and 0.59 as the mass fraction of the action. 
And for the product, we have 0.462 here and 0.5 here for the nine. So from this is uh, the, the stoichiometric balance reaction, and we can identify from this y here, from these two values, we can evaluate the or we can directly make the ratio between 92 and 64, and we have our uh, stoichiometric X-ray. Is this one? So you see, you have seen here that uh, it should be somewhere except on the other one. 1.4 as the, the mixture ratio that give us the maximum performance. In this evaluation, considering this is a green obtain considering equilibrium conditions, so it's something overestimated in terms of performance. And uh, so, if we now exploit this also to evaluate our uh, Heat of reaction, we have to consider 0.4 by 1.57 here and we multiply by, uh, yeah, uh, this is for, for the unit mass, so it's not a value, and this. Uh, Point five three one mega per kilogram multiplying point four one by the value, then you have to consider uh, sorry, this includes uh, body disturb. So it's point four one by one point five five seven plus point five nine multiplied by minus point one. So this is the product contribution to the, the sorry, the reactant contribution to the overall uh, heat of the action, and then we have contribution of products that is this quantity multiplied by this one, and this uh, is six point one nine one. So that we have 6.722 megajoules per kilogram. And as usual, you can evaluate our your as 3,666.7 Per second that corresponds to a specific impulse of 364 seconds. Of course, this is greater than what we have seen also with the equilibrium in vacuum, and this is because, of course, we were considering an expansion, a limited expansion, up to uh, uh, for an area of of force. So this is the Ideal value that consider that we we include the propellant standard condition and uh, uh, we expand up to standard temperature to the cold. That is what we have seen uh, at the beginning. We only and we also are considering that these are the only products of reaction. That is not the actual case because we have an equilibrium condition that will include also other fish. 
So this is the reference value, the maximum value. Here we have below this value because of the mentioned reason. Then we can uh, see, we have seen this, and we can now apply, for instance, our gray assumption, or modified gray assumption to evaluate performance considering the uh, equilibrium converging section and the frozen regime expansion. And we find that maximum specific pass, uh, considering again uh, vacuum performance, we see 70 and 15 on bar, this case, vacuum. And in this, in, with this assumption, we find that the maximum specific pass is obtained where well, well, is equal to 1.3, which is on the fuel rich side. That means that there is more fuel than in circumstantial conditions. And this, and because there are reactions, so because they are reactions exist, uh, and then we have not the idea uh, combination of the atoms in the most uh, desired product that we have seen before, the optimum performance can occur at different conditions. And uh, in these conditions, we have a maximum IP dimension 298 seconds. So if you look at volumetric specific parts, we'll find that the maximum, the optimum condition will be 1.4. And this is because the density of the fuel is less than the density of the oxidizer. So what, uh, uh, just a reminder, you already know, you I'm sure that you have enough of that, but just underline once more that in this case of hypercarbon, carbon, propeller, there are concerns about safety and the, uh, let's say, uh, management, and it is because or they are toxic, uh, about two others that are toxic problems. So let's move to a second propellant combination. So after the first one was hypercarbon uh, turbo, we consider now the same character combination. So before passing to this, I'd like just mention uh, the use of that propeller. We find this that propeller, for instance, in the upper stage of Vega, it was a propeller of uh, Ariane 4. It's, uh, it is a propeller of long launch launcher, uh, Chinese long launch launcher. Is propellant of proton launcher of Russia. It was the propellant of Titan launcher. It is the propellant of many missions. It is the propellant of uh, Juno, of the sea, and so on. So, I mean, the first, uh, the first combination of propellants has a wide and important application. Despite we are considering toxic propellant. Uh, then let's move to semi cryogenic combination. Semi cryogenic means that one of the propellants is cryogenic phase, in case of cryogenic time, and another one 
is soluble one. So examples. Typically, are all considering the cryogenic oxygen as the oxidizer. Cryogenic oxidizer plus soluble fuel. This is the typical chemical genic combination. And uh, so the oxidizer actually in principle could be either oxygen or chlorine, both are cryogenic, and sorbo fuel means uh, kerosene or alkyl one, alcohols or hydrogen. Yeah. So let's list some examples. O2 RT1, O2 RT1, and F2 RT1, F2 RT1. You know that not only we just mentioned these for uh, purpose of study because it's never, it's never been applied in practice. But it's interesting to have a comparison because of the interesting properties of chlorine as an oxidizer. So recall that densities are for O2, 1.14, for F2, we have 1.6, more or less. So let's see the performance that you can expect of this combination. And keep in mind that the, the former one of the combination, and you see that they are not much different. We find a vacuum in a material condition, 100 seconds. More or less the same. And higher values for the combination with chlorine. So it goes from 300 up to 360 in case of chlorine and hydrogen. And similarly, in vacuum, you see a slightly higher value compared to what you have seen for thermal propellants. I call that these are all ill ideal value because we are considering equilibrium condition up to the exit. And you see the values of the order of 360 seconds for the combination with oxygen and about 400 seconds for the combination with chlorine. But the difference between hydrogen and RP1 is not so high. So, of course, if you have to choose, you will choose for sure RP1 with this. Uh, quite cheaper and safer. So we would like to leave also the density specific points. So that you have an idea. So these are seconds, kilogram per cubic meter. And you see here that is that the gap uh, between the, the fluorine uh, as oxidizer and the, and the oxygen as the oxidizer is increased because of the higher density of fluorine with respect to oxygen. And you also see that uh, there is, uh, in this case, for the volumetric specific impact, you see an improvement of performance. For so hydrogen, and this is because of the higher density of hydrogen compared to to, uh, to RP1. It is one uh, again, point eight more or less. Uh, then we have also another column here that can be the best class for performance. 
and it will be 2.6, 1 1.0, 2.6, 2.4. These are mixed ratios, and uh, the average densities are more or less one in this case is 1.02, 1.06, 1 1.05, and 1.36, 1.36. So this is again an overview of course oxygen is safer in what to use. And uh, so this is a very common combination in launchers. So mostly uh, oxygen is used for launchers because it's a carbon propellant and we would prefer, even if it's called space storage, has not been much used in space when we have long time for storage. So this is typically used in uh, boosters, especially when you, you will not use hydrogen, that gives you the best, the best performance that we will mention later. But here we have a higher density. So it's more or less the same density or slightly lower density of a solid propellant combination. So we can get compact uh, tanks and at the same time uh, produce uh, higher specific parts for better performance than solid. So these are being widely used examples. Uh, first stage of Saturn V, or uh, first and second stage of Soyuz, and uh, for today application, of course, I can mention Alpha 9, which is based on this covalent combination, and of course, many developments also for all launchers are considering. This combination it's not not being widely used in Europe, and this is also related to the fact that we have not much uh, chaos in our network. So it's uh, also for this reason that has not been the the most used propellant combination in Europe. Uh, Yes, a comment that can be done is uh, is the fact that considering uh, combustion of hydrocarbons will produce uh, soot, so uh, carbon particles uh, that you find in the exhaust and that you find also on the words of the uh, of the engine. It's true that it's not so bad as the, the, the exhaust of the uh, water propellant combination, where you have, uh, for instance, uh, nitrogen oxide that can be left through in the exhaust, and uh, but still, of course, can. Uh, give some concern, consider that here, however, this is better or, or it's not so bad as the uh, combustion of, of uh, hydrocarbons with A because there is no nitrogen in the So it's just oxygen and hydrocarbon. About the uh, combination with other things. Oxygen and dilatin in principle, this can be interesting because of a possible, uh, but also in case of N2 it would be interesting in case because of the possible uh, dual use of hydrazine, both as monopropellant and as propellant. So we have a single tank for the hydrazine that can be used both for the main propulsion of hydropellant and for. Uh, Secondary proportion that uh, uh, where either the issues of monoprobella. 
<clears throat> Finally, we have the third phase, which is the full length diagram. So, photogenic means that both few elements of stasis are photogenic, and so you will consider the oxygen and thorium as oxidizer, and on the other hand, you will consider the mentioned pyrogenic fuels, which are hydrogen and methane. So, uh, with hydrogen as half carogenic and methane as considered a mild carogenic or space hormone. So, we see this combination O2 H2 or O2 H4 and similarly with chlorine. We like to mention also here the specific processing at sea level and vacuum. Same condition as before. The vacuum processing seconds. And you see that we have here significantly higher specific process in case of hydrogen as the fuel. Whereas there is a slight improvement considering. Methane compared to the other hydrocarbons. Again, the marking performance comes from considering fluorine as the oxidizer. And uh, like also now to to list the other properties and in particular the polymeric specific process so that you can see the, the low density role of hydrogen uh, fuel combination compared to, for instance, to methane. Let's say this is the optimum work performance, would be 4.1, 3 .2, 7 .9, 4 .4. Average density 0.23, 0.86, 0.06, 1.08. So you see that the average density is quite lower than what you have seen before. For the other covalent combination, and this is due to the very low density of hydrogen. So, for instance, you see here for the poor performance, the, the uh, oxidizer to pure ratio would be about four compared to the stoichiometric value that is eight. And, uh, and this is because of uh, the advantage of having uh, a light uh, mixture of product. But of course, you have to consider that if you have not such a high changes as you have seen, you have seen the role of oil in the hydrogen oxygen combination. To the core. And you, you will recall that it's not so, that it's rather flat. The part of the curve from the better performance point, the maximum mystery, and uh, the stoichiometric value. So in this part where the, the curve is set at plus, you can save mass moving towards uh, higher values of OF because you reduce the mass of tank. So often you find that the optimum value of this covalent combination is something between uh, five and six, rather than the maximum performance that you will get at 4.1. Uh, so it's, uh, I should stop, but uh, just let me conclude this before the break. I just want to, to stress here 
a moment that this is the main product of the action here is for the web. So it's a very benign, uh, benign uh, exhaust. We have no problem with this exhaust because it's just for the web. And uh, it's also, you have also uh, a colorless flame, so you have to see some transparent jet when you look to this uh, rocket powered by hydrogen and oxygen. Uh, yes, of course, these are not considered for the moment. And uh, hydrogen and oxygen uh, widely used that uh, for launcher, they start the main engine. And also the uh, fourth stage and second and upper stage of Ariane 5 are all powered by hydrogen and oxygen as a propellant combination. So it's an important combination despite the cost of having a cryogenic hydrogen at regular temperature and also the mass of the insulation layer structure that you consider. Have to consider for this uh, yes, I'll stop and I'll continue. Uh, after five minutes, the uh, the uh, the uh, Thank you. 
combination between oxygen and hydrogen. Just uh, a few words about the combination of oxygen and methane, the fully cryogenic combination that is in this case is not with a half uh, cryogenic. And uh, the interest of this combination is that uh, uh, this is the lightest hydrocarbon, H4, can be obtained in, uh, we can consider pure, it's, it's not a blend like RP1, and it has a, a low amount of carbon. This means better performance among hydrocarbons and also the minimum amount of carbon deposits in terms of coating in, in, cool, in the cooling system or in uh, cool everywhere and of soot in the exhaust. Uh, moreover, it's of interest because uh, we, we, in principle, it can be produced when we know how to produce it uh, on the surface of Mars. So there is also this vision that uh, moves towards this propeller combination, and this is also, so, let's say, uh, easily available. So, uh, for this reason, it's something that has not been used in the past as a propellant combination, but it's presently under development almost everywhere. And we have development here in uh, Colapedro for the big area upper stage that should be realizing containing uh, oxygen, methane engine. Uh, for the iron next by iron group uh, is also under uh, validation and is being used by the uh, Starship project of SpaceX. So it's, let's say, it's today propellant or for the next uh, decade probably to be one of the most uh, interesting propellants. So uh, even this information, of course, we can we can evaluate the stoichiometric proportion. So here we have done already for for this covalent combination. In our exercises, we have got that is a the stoichiometric bias for oxygen and hydrogen, and this uh, four for oxygen and methane, and we have also evaluated this for chlorine uh, hydrogen for sure. So in principle, amongst different covalent combinations, you can find something better than what you've seen so far, but always at the cost of using chlorine and also additives like beryllium and aluminum as a metallic powder that will provide even higher silicon powder what it can be obtained by this covalent combination that it thinks what should be the, the most powerful one. And, uh, but of course, you, you can get 
550 seconds in principal vacuum, but using uh, the toxic oxidizer for in and toxic beryllium uh, particles. So consider that the record specific impulse at the end is 460, 60 microns, and this for an upper stage using hydrogen oxygen. This has been the, the, what, the highest specific impulse of the same mechanical propulsions so far, and it's, it's not far on the from the, the maximum value that can be uh, theoretically achieved. So, of course, for the application, we have to consider trade-offs, um, as I said, between the, the, the storage condition, the, the cost of keeping propeller uh, in terms of uh, Safety, corrosion, ergenicity, uh, so insulation, and so on. So let me review now something that will continue to the discussion about our. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. I think so. So as I don't hear you, you will never tell me if it works or not. So we should have it here. Uh, something. So let's start with uh, with this, and I will share with everybody. Oh, you don't see. <laughs> mm -hmm.
abbiamo capito come, come avremmo fatto ad ascoltare adesso. Però. So, I think you can still hear me. And uh, I think that everybody sees now the stable. This is just a list of uh, propellants. Of course, there are not all propellants, but you, should, you see a list which is greater than, is larger than what you have seen. And you see which kind of information can be interesting. You see, for instance, here, aniline, and you see that is uh, carbon, hydrogen, uh, nitrogen, and this is a hydrogen group, more or less. And so you see that the use is fuel, is coolant also, and uh, molecular weight, freezing point, boiling point, bubble pressure. And stability, handling, assault, storability, and materials compatibility, which is also another important uh, property, as we mentioned uh, before. So you see here some of the propellants we have mentioned. Uh, here, hydrazine is given also as an oxidizer, but this is typically not to use. And uh, you see among handling assaults, toxic, flammable, and uh, the compatibility with different materials. Uh, you see, for instance, here uh, this uh, ethylene, uh, here C2H5 OH as possible fuel to. So these are all fuels. And even something with different or more, more or less complex chemical formula. This is a list of oxidizers. Uh, you see that some of them can be used as coolant, some are not used or are not uh, so as possible coolants. And you see here uh, IFRNA or WFNA. Nitrogen tetroxide and hydrogen peroxide that we have seen 95%. This is the grade that means it's a mixture with water, and 95% means, means that it's 95% hydrogen peroxide, and the remaining 5% is water. Or uh, chlorine trifluoride means that you have two oxidizing species, two oxidizing atoms like fluorine and, fl and fluorine in the same molecule. And uh, here there is also uh, other, other, there are other uh, propellants, uh, ammonia, liquid fluorine, and liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen that we have seen. And you have more as oxidizer here in the list. There are also oxygen defluoride and ozone that, of course, has uh, uh, three electronegative atoms in the molecule, but very toxic, flammable, very toxic, flammable as the negative uh, property. High density, and uh, this in principle will also lead to high specific impulse. Then let me find something that I wanted to show at this point. I have things mixed, but I don't want to exit from this program. So let me select. OK, it's a random uh, presentation at this point. So this is for UDMH. And these are plots of gamma, chamber temperature, volumetric specific impulse, and a molar mass as a function of the mixture ratio. And you see that we have here this maximum of temperature, more or less here. That means that this, I don't know if you see the arrow, probably yes. Uh, you see that here we have more or less a stoichiometric condition where we have the maximum uh, adiabatic frame temperature or chamber temperature. 
uh, you see that the blue line tell you that as we move towards mixture Richard of oxidizer, we are going to increase the average molar mass of combustion products. And so accordingly, you have that characteristic velocity will peak at uh, OF smaller than the peak that we have for temperature. And uh, this means that also the specific impacts, and we'll see in another plot, I don't know if it's here. Yes, no, it's polymeric specific impacts. What is the difference here? And uh, I should have also the, the, the specific impulse. This is for M2 H4. So probably you, this is the two, one is uh, the polymeric specific impulse with peaks here. And this is the specific impulse that peaks at lower than stoichiometric condition. I don't know, uh, this probably is vacuum. It's not volumetric, this B. So this is vacuum specific impulse and the corresponding volumetric value, which of course moves this peak on the right towards higher values of OF in this case, also higher than the uh, stoichiometric uh, proportion. So uh, let's move back and see these plots which are relevant to hydrazine and uh, N2O4. Uh, the other quantity that is plotted here is also gamma, the black line. And in, in for hydrazine and hydrogen to the oxide combination doesn't change much. This is value of products, of course, the product mixture. And you see again that we have a uh, maximum. You, you recall that uh, we, we have seen 1.475 as stoichiometric proportion, and you see that the peak of temperature is more or less there. Whereas you see the peak of specific impulse, it's, it's at a richer uh, value of OF, more or less here, considering that we have, if you relate this to the C star, so the, of course there is also gamma because there is a, the expansion, but if you have a first idea as this TC over M, which is uh, on the square root for the evaluation of C star, of course, you see that you have to combine this red line, the blue line, and the ratio between them will move, of course, the maximum at a, a lower value of F. And here again, you see that volumetric specific impulse in this case is close to the stoichiometric combination compared with uh, the specific impulse, which peaks, of course, as we have seen just before. The values re relevant to MMH are here. Yes, so these two plots, uh, not much different, just that we can identify here 2.25 more or less, 2.3 as a stoichiometric combination where we have the peak of temperature. But you recall that we don't have the peak of specific impulse there because we have also other reactions. And here we are not in at this temperature. We don't we do not reach the stoichiometric combination of products. Something closer to that occurs at lower temperature, and so we can combine these two quantities and see that we have maximum specific impulse in this case here. And again, the comparison of the maximum that you can have for the volumetric specific parts. Again, slightly lower than stoichiometric combination. 
but of course the maximum volumetric specific impulse is something that give give us an idea is not exactly a value that measure the performance of our dog then are the plots that i can show you this one uh, this one shows the the conditions this is something similar to what uh, i showed you in terms of range or liquid conditions you see the temperature here and this is the range for instance for liquid oxygen from 54 up to more than 100 uh, this is up to the critical temperature this is from the let's say if it's from the the freezing temperature up to the critical temperature this range so you see the ranges for liquid oxygen liquid fluorine liquid methane liquid hydrogen and uh, on the ordinates you find the specific gravity so that show these two properties of uh, the propellants which are the density of course you like to have a storable high density and possibly also high performance propellants so it should be this one in this region and but of course performance is not the best and uh, the high density of liquid chlorine makes this interesting and uh, in terms of let's say storage hydrogen is the worst because as low specific gravity and low temp uh, range of temperature in the liquid phase so let's say this is the storage uh, plot that should uh, the best for us would be here on the right upper side where we have a good range of temperature and also a high density but this is typically opposed to the performance especially for fuels Uh, this is against uh, again a list. These are propellant combinations. So the, the the table we have seen before was just for propellants. Also the last plot, the plots we have seen for the hydrazines were re relevant to their combination with N and two O four. And here you see the performance uh, obtained by different combination for specific mixture ratios. Uh, for instance, oxygen, hydrogen, you see here the combination of 3.4 and 4.02, which are quite less on what we find in uh, rear rockets. And uh, in fact, you see values of temperature which are not so high. And uh, Despite that, you find interesting values of specific impulse just being computed here by the shifting equilibrium assumption and frozen uh, expansion. The value of K that you find here, this is our gamma. So it's the ratio of specific heats of the combustion products. Again, you see that with oxygen, a, a list of possible fuels. Two hydrazines, hydrazine and UDMH, RP1, hydrogen and methane. We have mentioned all of them. Uh, fluorine, we have mentioned both hydrogen and hydrogen. And hydrogen tetroxide is typically used with hydrazines. So you see hydrazine, and this is aerosine, 50% UDMH, 50% hydrazine, and MMH. Then you have also the possibility to use this in combination with RP1, but it's typically it's not being used. Uh, in this combination and this is uh, our RFNA uh, with tyrosine or RP1 and hydrogen peroxide RP1 that in principle could be an interesting uh, storable propellant combination uh, that is not uh, bad in terms of uh, uh, exhaust gases and uh, but of course you have problems with storage of hydrogen peroxide and the performance is not so high 
So this is some reason that uh, made this choice not being considered so far. Now we have here uh, some uh, uh, plot for uh, a given chamber pressure and exit pressure. So this is, let's say, an idea of the performance of first stage thermal specific impulse and for the different propellant combination as function of the mixture ratio. Of course, each of these propellant combination has a different uh, stoichiometric OF. But you see that the combination of hydrogen and oxygen is quite far from all the other. So in terms of performance, in terms of specific impulse, this combination is definitely the best one among the, the this common combination considered at the moment. And you see that the other differences of performance of all other combinations are not so uh, so large. So it's, we see that uh, we can improve slightly the performance considering methane, uh, but it's not uh, a huge difference compared to, for instance, RP1 or storable combinations that you see in the green and blue lines. Uh, Yes, this this is uh, the same discussion, except the var different values applies to vacuum operation. And here you see this is for higher ratio of 150, which is more than what you have seen, as I mentioned before. And these are being obtained by Bray assumption. So are, uh, before we see higher ratio of 40 and equilibrium assumption. And also lower value of uh, uh, chamber pressure. So here you see again, uh, I, I cannot add many comments with respect to the former plot because it's just shifted more or less towards higher value. Uh, and so we have no further information. And this has been already shown. Now we can see what has not shown so if you, at this point. <clears throat> so this is uh, uh, a plot considering the uh, let, let me check uh, uh, this plot so you see here the plots are relevant to the same color means that you are considering different assumptions uh, so equilibrium or not. And uh, in any case, you see this chamber temperature here that peaks as a different point with respect to characteristic velocity and specific impulse. So you see that specific impulse will peak at a higher OF with respect to the characteristic velocity because there is also a role of gamma. Uh, but uh, it's clear that you are at lower value at about four with respect to the maximum of uh, uh, temperature as stoichiometric condition. See here, the stoichiometric condition again, this is RP1 and O2. And uh, you see that here, the maximum of this style and the maximum specific impulse are very close to one another. And again, we have a maximum of specific impulse, which is at slightly higher values with respect to what you see for the uh, characteristic velocity. It's again uh, similar, of course, what you see here uh, is the specific impulse, the blue line, solid line is uh, the one obtained by uh, assumption of frozen flow, the dashed one correspond to Bayer assumption and the dot dashed line is referring to the case of shifting equilibrium condition. Uh, and so you see that of course values are higher, but you see that uh, the frozen flow assumption 
is closer to the Bray assumption, modified Bray assumption than the equilibrium one that is highly overestimating the uh, performance. Well, this is uh, something related to the combination of oxygen and uh, methane. And uh, so it's more or less the same information. Uh, but here you see also different chamber pressures that show that temperature peak will remain at the same position, at stoichiometric condition. And uh, you see that on the other hand, you are the, the peak of the ratio of temperature to molar mass is moving towards, you see here, probably it's difficult to, to see, but you see this peak here, and so the peak is slightly, it's a slightly higher value of OF. So the peak of this ratio is moving towards the, uh, the, the, um, the stoichiometric ratio. And so the other picture that you see, I will, I will show and discuss later. Uh, let's just start probably with this one. Available, we can start the next part. Because at this point, we once we have uh, discussed the different propellant combinations, we have, we would like to move, uh, so we have these propellants and we often consider that we have these propellants at a given pressure and they are reacting and uh, and they are providing these excess gases at a given temperature and they will evolve, we will react in some way. But of course, there is the first step that we have to consider, or in general, what we have to consider in, is how we put in contact these propellants and uh, how we make them react and how we can control the huge amount of heat which is released by these propellant combinations. We have seen uh, in uh, our exercises and probably also in some of the plots today, not probably, you have seen for sure, that uh, we have a temperature of the order of more than 3000 Kelvin. It is the order of magnitude of temperature that we have in uh, how our Trust chamber, what we call trust chamber. So, in fact, we have seen that we we can identify different parts, making together a liquid rocket engine, and uh, we have considered trust chamber where we have combustion chamber, uh, nozzle, a cooling system, and we have considered that we have tanks, we have a feed system, and we have some also uh let's say uh structures and control devices so the core of uh, the engine is the for sure the trust chamber that is where we convert our energy in uh, a jet uh, such that that provides our desired uh, trust in possibly in an efficient way so we already examined the expansion process because we, we know what happens to combustion products, but uh, uh, we still have to, uh, to see some details of the first part of what comes ahead. What, what we have seen so far is that we have reactants and we have products at a given flame temperature. So in general, in the combustion chamber, we have to, uh, you see here, uh, this figure, different regions. So we have our converging diverging nozzle, that is what we have examined. But you have 
also here you can see that we have an injector part, red combustion zone, a stream tub tube combustion zone, they are called in this way. So we, we identify different parts of our thrust chamber. In the first part, we have a region where we measure our propellant, we inject them in the combustion chamber, and we make them to react. So to, to do that, if we are considering this injection of propellant as liquids, uh, to make them to react, we have to mix them properly. Of course, you can. If you have some premixed mixture, you just have to ignite it if uh, we are not thinking about hypercaloric propellants. In general, they are not mixed because they are uh, stored in separate tanks and you have to mix them. So they are liquid. And uh, uh, what we can do to improve mixing is to uh, inject them in, uh, uh, in such a way that they create small drops that uh, can be more easily mixed with the other propellant. Of course, we, you are in, in an environment where you have gases because it's after reaction you have gas. So you have to atomize, you say the word is atomize your jet, that means to uh, get small drops of propellants. And these are still in liquid phase, so these drops have to vaporize and pass through the gaseous phase. Then they will mix the different reactants together and they will react. So we have these different steps all have to be done in this part here, in this first region, which is the injection atomization zone. Uh, the second part is that once you have methods injected, atomized, mixed propellants, they will react. So here there is a reaction which is rather quick. So here you see a large region, but actually this can be very uh, short in, in space because we have uh, combustion reactions which are typically uh, characterized by small characteristic times. So they are very quick and they will be realized in a short space. On the other hand, after you 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 have got most of it released in this region, there is another region that mentioned here where you have these gases which are not yet which are not yet at equilibrium condition because there will be some reaction that is lower. And so these lower reactions will need more time and therefore more space to be completed. And this is what occurs in this thin tube combustion zone that will occupy most of the thrust chamber. And here, consider that we have gases that are already moving at faster, uh, at a higher velocity. So the residence time could be even less here in the stream tube combustion zone than in the first part. So uh, we will uh, analyze uh, briefly these different parts. And in particular, we will see in the next uh, lecture from one side the uh, how we can design this region where we have some heat release at, uh, with, within a moving flow. So this will recall you the Rayleigh flow that you see in the quasi uh, one dimensional analysis, uh, quasi one dimensional flow analysis. And then we will focus also on the injector part just to describe the different injector uh, shapes uh, or uh, patterns that have been identified so far, uh, their importance in the design of a thrust chamber of a liquid rocket engine. So this is, will be 
the, the subject of uh, the next class that will be tomorrow at uh, late time, so <laughs> at the original time, four o'clock in the afternoon, because uh, I couldn't move it uh, uh, earlier. I have got, um, I was <laughs> had a scheduled uh, meeting before you asked me to move the, the class at earlier time, so I couldn't change it. So let's see tomorrow at uh, four o'clock. That's all for today. I will stop recording.